Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. High school football. For some, that means sitting in the stands rooting for your team. For others, it means making out behind the bleachers. Victoria Korth said this about her poem, Necking. I was exploring the many forms of the word, as a noun with multiple meanings, some idiomatic, and as a verb. I wanted to layer these meanings, seeking to create a visual effect through sound. She barely knew him, yet they were falling towards earth, as if falling were the same as landing on grass behind the firehouse at dusk his hand stretching the neck of her blue sweater while he rubbed his cheek against her, his neck pliable as a swan, upper body heavier as they leaned back, his dark red sweatshirt nearly invisible, empty bleachers an outline, wet honeysuckle familiar, sweet. He could have tightened fingers, rough from summer work, squeezed as she did the neck of her violin. He could have lifted her into his van. A mute swan grunted softly while he wrestled his need to touch. And she clung on, as if to earth's crust. Necking, Victoria Korth, from Passenger, Issue 54 In many parts of the country, late summer and early fall also means fresh corn season, For some, that means husking. For others, making out behind the silo. Here's Kathy Mangan's poem, Husking Corn for Dinner, She Thinks of an Old Boyfriend. She tears back the green blades like so many rough tongues, pinches the sticky threads from crevices, and lets the milky juices slick her palms. They were nineteen, freshmen, He was from Indiana and worked summers detasseling corn for DeKalb. It's dusk now as she unzips the ears, and she imagines him boarding the flatbed at the company silos, a yoke of July sun rising as they chug out to counties called Vermilion, Tippecanoe, Boone. Even now she sees him arrive at the dew-drenched fields, male and female rows stretching in a striped half-mile, watches him bind himself with bandanas and rubber-tipped gloves. And, forty years gone, her heart squeezes as she sees him roll down his sleeves to button at his bony, freckled wrists. She's now counting the cobs as he wades into the wet stalks. Steam rises and grasshoppers leap at his thighs while he twists and drops the first pollen-laden tassels of the day. When she visited from the east, they'd drive the back roads of Brown County at night in his mint-green rambler, then park and peel each other, all fingers and knobs and lips in the gummy back seat, windows rolled down to crickets and creaking corn, his red hair brushing her cheeks like shafts of strawberry light, their teeth nibbling each other, as if they were biting into tight kernels to burst the sugar. Kathy Magan's poem, Husking Corn for Dinner, She Thinks of an Old Boyfriend, from her book, Taproot. At least tangentially related to corn on the cob, September 25th is National Cooking Day, who knew? To commemorate it, Ruth Mota's poem, Women Cooking Chicken. How unlike the chicken of my youth, these skinless thighs and breasts, severed and tightly wrapped in cellophane, labeled organic and cage-free, spared the sight of blood and scent of ripened flesh, I need nothing but a quick hot wash to plop my pullet in the pan. At thirteen, my first chicken came without a pedigree, blanketed in plain pink paper from Ducca's butcher shop. I stood confronted by a whole chicken, except for the head and feet and the pulled feathers that left her skin erupting, just like mine. I laid her naked on her back across the cutting board, shoved my hand through the viscous hole between her legs to retrieve her heart, her twisted neck, whatever giblets were. My mother put me to this task without instruction. 
So my blade landed dull, false cuts before I clipped her joints, divided up the body parts I dusted and dunked in sizzling oil. So many millions of women in the world have washed the fetid fat of chicken from their fingers. I once saw a sugarcane farmer's wife on a plantation in Brazil chase a chicken with her machete, slit its throat. She wrapped her own legs, ribboned with purple veins, around a bucket of scalding water to pluck its feathers. That tough old hen who pecked for scratch will never sizzle in a frying pan, but boil for hours to flavor soup, to feed a dozen children, beak and claws afloat, yesterday's bread sopping up her juice. As I lay my platter down now upon my table and watch my daughter's greasy fingers fiddle with crispy thighs and breasts, I wonder how, when they are women, they will relate to chickens. Will they find it too grotesque to touch such flesh, let alone consume it? Or will a uniformed woman, wrapping in a factory, make their slaughtered poultry palatable? Women Cooking Chicken by Ruth Mota from Passager's 2018 Poetry Contest issue. To buy Kathy Mangan's book Taproot or to subscribe to or learn more about Passager and its commitment to writers over 50, go to PassagerBooks.com. You can download Burning Bright from Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and various other podcast apps. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the Passenger staff, I'm John Shore. Music